our final meeting of the year. Roll call for the City Council meeting of Wednesday, December 18th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington is absent. Mr. Jones, Mr. Kutowski. Here. Ms. Shaw, Mr. Witherspoon. Please rise for a moment of silent meditation and pledge of allegiance. Mr. President, uh, as we go into our moment of uh, meditation, we ask that we remember those in our community uh, that are less fortunate than we are in any and every way, locally as well as globally. Uh, we ask uh, that we remember those who've lost loved ones in our community uh, since the last time we were in these chambers. And do want to uh, remember as a young man growing up, uh, predominantly on the east side of town, but west side a little bit as well, um, there was a name of, a, of an older gentleman named uh, Gene Turan, who was, uh, I mean, uh, you know, they used to say a good boxer. He had good hands. That's what the kids say. You don't want these hands. Uh, but he was um, not only a boxer and an athlete, uh, but as a young man, I remember him being a very positive person in the community, working at community centers and doing what he could to give back to the community. And so he uh, transitioned from this life uh, a few days ago. And so we want to remember his memory and remember his family. And finally, I ask our God and Creator to give us the wisdom, the courage, and the proper information so that we can make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of Erie. Pledge of Allegiance. from the City Council meeting of Wednesday, December 4th, 2019 and bills for payment on December 13th, 20th, and 27th, 2019. Mr. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Ms. Kotowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. First, okay, okay, we're going to acknowledge the uh, council people that are leaving that have served the community, and then we will go on to repository sales after that. We'll go in alphabetical order. Uh, Curtis Jones. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, uh, come on up here. It's been an honor, and I'll, I'll say, say more at my uh, closing remarks and, and, and report. It's been an honor to serve previously to this year, 12 years, as a three-time elected a city council member, uh, and then the honor of being uh, selected to come back by this August body. Uh, I appreciate that. I don't take it lightly. And uh, I'll be leaving the dais, but I won't be leaving in service to the community. So um, thank you very much, and it's been my pleasure.
new elected official across the hall as treasurer in 2020, but uh, on behalf of our council here, I'd like to present you with your service and dedication. I want to thank the citizens of Erie who have been very uh, good to me over the years. They've had faith in me, and hopefully I've returned it to them. I want to thank the uh, council I've worked with the last couple. Uh, they're some of the finest people I've ever seen, and the work they do, I don't think people truly understand. It's a heck of a job. Uh, it's a lot more hours. It's not a part-time job. I don't think people uh, have some comments about each one of them later. But uh, I think they've done a lot of nice work. I've been telling you, there's been a lot of nice uh, movement from this council in positive direction. I think they've done that. And uh, I just want to thank each one of them and the administration for uh, helping us along during these last few years. Thank you. I'm going to sit down, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> and I'll be very brief. Just thank you. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to lead this council in 2019. Uh, we've had some trials and tribulations up until the bitter end with this uh, budget we've been dealing with for the last two months. Uh, but uh, I honestly believe as president of this council and as a council as a whole that uh, we are trying to do everything we possibly can for the good of this city. Um, we do not always agree, get along. Sometimes we even bicker a little bit, but uh, with all that being said, I appreciate the su support of this council this year and uh, uh, naturally we still have work to do and I want to thank the citizens for their support uh, in this endeavor also. Thank you. Okay, back to work. Uh, <laughs> do we have anybody here this evening for a repository sale? Please step forward. Hello, good evening. Hi. Uh, Alex Kononchek. 963 West 6th Street. I'm here inquiring about 1163 West 6th Street, uh, which is a small postage stamp lot on the corner of Sherman Cranberry. Um, looking to acquire it to keep up with the scheduled maintenance. Uh, if you drive by today, there would be trees, cars, debris uh, all over the lot. We'll also get it on a bi-weekly mowing schedule and keep that cleaned up better than it is today. Thank you. Miss Allen I, is our... Uh, I'm the questioner. Questionnaire lady. <laughs> I, I know I'm aware of what you've done with the property that, that you have on 6th and Cascade. It's vis very visible what, you know, how you took a, an eyesore and turned that into an asset. But we ask everybody, so um, do you have a budget for what you're going to do with this new repository sale and the resources and a timeline to get things done? And I know you've also, you've also worked on stuff on 8th Street, too, I believe. So Yes. Uh, 963 West 6th was a blighted property, which took me almost three years to remove from that list. Um, Long-term plans for 1163 would be to uh, acquire a clean it up, maintain it better than it is today, and uh, have a larger footprint in this lot of just a small two bedroom, two bedroom. Thank you for your interest and investment in Erie. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. 
Uh, my name is Gerald Kananchik. I live at uh, Seminole Drive, and I'm interested in acquiring uh, two of the uh, repositories uh, properties. One is at 927 West 11th, and the other one is 534 West 17th. Uh, to sort of answer the general questions, well, number one, uh, so we have renovated a, a few properties all in the Northwest here at Quadra, and we have on the maintenance side a uh, landscaper, uh, Manny Garnisa, who actually does our scheduled maintenance of cuts and trims and cleanups and paper pickups and that sort of stuff. So that's something that just would be added to his list. I'm going to talk about, um, it's kind of fluid what we end up doing, but 927 is a dump, West 11th. It's strewn with non-operating vehicles, motorcycles, tree debris, construction debris. Uh, so it's, maybe it's typical, maybe it's not typical. But so what would I be doing soon after ownership? Um, I'd be con I'd be putting I'll be posting the cars I'll be, I'd be contacting each of the neighbors on either side sometimes one or both of those would want to sell which then I'd have a you know an ideal parking situation um, I'd be working with uh, when and if those cars don't get moved because the neighbors don't move them Sergeant Early is a great resource because I contact him and he does his job to uh, post the vehicles and get them towed out uh, but th it's that 927 is basically a dump we know it's a dump we're not going to hide from that and we're going to get it cleaned up and then what steps on that be would be uh, you know like I said I'll contact the neighbors maybe uh, you know I'll end up it's a pretty deep lot pretty wide lot not a bad area probably the dumpiest one on the, on the area so I mean, that's 927 the other one 534 West 17th is a, it's pretty it's level it's clean all it does need to be in, in a perfect world is in the simplest world is cut but Scott Henry owns or controls uh, one of the adjacent lots so that kind of presents a larger de development opportunity know uh, because you passed it Lerda has a great opportunity to build on something and have that construction be uh, tax exempt and it's something uh, I want to start uh, not this property probably at fifth and cherry in the spring that we could do a two or three unit uh, on that one so questions are good and well thank I think you answered all our questions and thank you for that detailed report that's a great example of how to come prepared for the repository well, it's number one, it's a great you're doing this because, you know, I think you can't just, uh, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks. It sounds great. Uh, there's a lot more work than that. And you kind of have to try to have it not be, we continue by making sure that it's sold to people who don't, you know, <laughs> who pay their taxes and their water and their sewer and who seem to have a reasonable track record of doing something positive in the future. And I think if you looked at our history, which I won't go into today, we've done that. But thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Any other repository sales this evening? Any other repositories? Hearing none, that brings us to citizens to be heard. I don't know if we have a Daniel Fetzner here tonight. Daniel Fetzner signed in. Uh, doesn't appear he's in, so uh, if there's any other citizens to be heard, please come forward and Shall listen. That's the young guy right there. Okay. I want to know where Excuse me, you're. Uh, Ron Stemka, 3925 Marion Street, Erie, PA. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is for the mayor. Mayor, when did the $10 million come falling out of the sky? We're not allowed Ex to talk. Ex this is the Mr. Skemp, this isn't a. Back no, I'm miss, no, 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 I'm miss asking. You know, ten million dollars, and that's all I'm asking. And actually, this is coming to council as a okay, board. Okay, it's coming as to council. As a council. board. As a board. Now, I, I asked the question: Where did the ten million dollars fall from the sky? And when was this proposed to the city council on that vote on this water department? I'm asking. Once again, we're not. Okay. To get into dialogue, we if somebody has a response to any citizen's question, they'll be answered during committee reports. Okay. Another thing. Okay. Well, if the water department has such good faith, why couldn't it then instead of the ten uh, ten million, why couldn't it just went out two or three years and paid us that extra money for two or three years instead of the whole ten million dollars? That'd be easy. You guys, you got this budget straightened out. And got something straightened out. Am I wrong or right? 
I, I mean, I shouldn't be asked that. I just, like me and Bagnoni, we used to come up here and talk to you guys like talking to the floor. That's what it comes down to me. That's why a lot of people don't come here. We should have somebody ask a question. If someone wants, someone wants to jump in, jump in. But like I said, the water authority, that's a joke. That's a scam. I just would like to know when was that started? That's all the question I asked. If one of you guys can just give me that answer, that's all I want. We ain't saying nothing. Okay. I'm done. See you later. Any other citizens be heard this evening? <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Barry Koppel, uh, 1957 West 30th Street. Long time, long, lifelong Erie resident and homeowner. Um, I'm here today to just kind of float an idea out to Council. Again, I'm always about solutions, not about pointing fingers or placing blame. I love Erie, I love this city, and um, I want to do what I can to, to help it make it a better place. So I just want to throw an idea out here. Again, I know we're limited with time, so if I don't get through this, I promise you I'll be back to recap and, and finish what I have to say. But I'm thinking about the elderly people in this city. Eh? I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> I'm starting to get up there as well. But uh, I've heard this over and over over the years, and I just recently heard it again on talk radio. An elderly woman that was in her early 80s was talking about how this is probably the final nail in the coffin for her as far as the tax increase, the garbage fee, the sewer, and these, these types of things. And uh, that she was gonna probably have to sell her property, maybe move in with family or make some other arrangements. And I thought how sad it actually is is for somebody to live in the city their entire life, work hard, pay all their bills, and you get to the, you know, the golden years and you're making a decision on whether or not you, you know, maybe the one last thing that you have in your life, which is your house, and you have to, to leave that. So I'm trying to throw an idea out here and wonder if anybody in the administration or the council would pick this ball up and run with it. And it would have to be a combined effort with the county and the school board. Uh, and within the city, it would have to be the garbage department and the uh, water authority and the sewer department. What if we were to actually have something along the lines of, similar to what LERTA is, but a property tax and fees uh, deferment program so that everybody that is a homeowner, whether you're still living in the house as the actual owner or if you're a life tenant or whatever the case may be, that at the age, once you've reached the age of 80, your tax basis on your city, your county, school district, your sewer rates, your water rates, uh, and the garbage rate is capped at that level. And going forward, you'll pay that same amount every year. And if there's any increase in, in fees or any increases in taxes, you would stay at that capped rate. But in essence, you would be basically signing your own type of lien against your property so that when the house is finally sold, whether it's through death, whether it's through going into a nursing home, uh, life tenant and family members take it over, whatever the case may be, whatever the differences would be, let's say you started this at 80 years old and you're 85 and this takes place. Over those five years, whatever that incremental differences might have been is then collected and paid to all of the various departments and agencies. And if we want to maybe turn this into something that actually might, might, might make a little bit of money for the city, we put into it, I make a, a modest one and a half percent interest rate. And this would not be means tested. It would be anybody who wants to sign up for it, by all, but it also would not be something that would be automatic. So that you would have to sign up for this. And I just think it would be something that, that would be worthwhile looking into and allowing elderly people to be able to stay in their homes. Uh, who wouldn't want to be able to do that? And it's not something that actually would cost the city money. Uh, we would not be making more money at the beginning of it, but it would not be, we would not be collecting less. And probably within, let's, let's face it, you know, within five, six years of that uh, 
program beginning, you probably would start to see revenues coming in, the additional revenues coming in, because people would be selling their house, going into a nursing home, or passing away, whatever the case may be. And uh, so I just thought this would be a, a unique idea that might help citizens of Erie that are elderly, that people, like I said, again, you would have to get a lot of people involved in this and it would have to be looked at, but uh, maybe it's not 80, maybe it's, maybe it's less than that. I'm thinking 80 is a good, uh, a good age uh, for, the, for this program, but it would be a tax deferment, see, fees and uh, tax deferred program uh, for the city of Erie. And who knows if this were to turn out to be something really good, you know, maybe we would be the model for not only the state of Pennsylvania, but maybe a model for around the country uh, that cities could could look into. So that's my comments. I hope that somebody thinks that this is an idea that's worth looking at and picking up football and running with it. Thank you for your time. Very good. Thank you. How you doing? Hi. I'm Kidar, Kidar Muhammad. How you doing? Hi. Um, I'm not, I don't have anything to discuss or a topic to bring. I just, I'm just here because I haven't been to a city council meeting before uh, in a while. So um, I'm just here to basically say hello to everybody. Um, last time I was here and I spoke, things became a little manic and a little gibbous since I've spoken, since I've been here, so I just come in just to speak and say hello, and I want to get a little bit more involved in the, in the city council meeting. So I just came to say, sit in, watch everything, make sure everything was fine, and just kind of air that out, that uh, how you doing, and we can hope we can continue to build on what the city council has been doing as of lately. Thank you. That's it. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming. We have any other citizens to be heard this evening? <laughs> Any other citizens to be heard? <coughs> Moving on. Ordinances Those. for final passage. Council file number 16-134, official ordinance number 75-2019. An ordinance fixing the tax rate for all city purposes for the fiscal year beginning on January 1st, 2020 and ending on December 31st, 2020. Section one, that a tax rate for govern, general government purpose for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020 and ending December 31st, 2020 is hereby fixed and levied at the rate of 13.12 mills upon each dollar of assessed valuation of real estate taxable for city purposes in the city of Erie during the year 2020 or upon each $100 of assessed valuation of real estate for tax purposes in the city of Erie. By Mr. Wynarski, second by Mr. Witherspoon, the Council File Ordinance Bill number 16134, and now known as Official File Ordinance number 75 2019, to be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Ms. Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mr. Shaw. Is this the tax increase? This is fixing the tax rate. Right? Were they, they increased the millage? No. All righty. Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Although I, uh, I'd like to comment, although I propose this in the first reading as well as the second, I honestly do not agree with the property tax increase due to the fact that I thought we could keep it at a leaner rate to a 0.75 instead of jumping it to a 1.50. That was my goal. And I believe majority of council at one point, uh, sometimes uh, we went into the deal with a potential three quarter percent increase and uh, there was a water deal put on the table that uh, we could do away with it completely. Uh, Although we did not entertain the water deal at this time, not saying it's totally off the table because we will be talking about it in the early 2020, um, 
after that was off the table, then we went to a 1.50, twice as much. So uh, anyway, with that being said, that it had a double, and I and we couldn't uh, come to some type of a adjustment on our end in this budget to bring it back down to the 0.75 or even a 1.0. Um, I I vote no against this uh, this tax increase. You're voting no, Mr. President. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Um, just for the sake of comment, I think <clears throat> that you know, of course, none of us want to raise taxes. Uh, none of us want to raise fees uh, because we don't benefit from it. It's not like business raising their prices benefit from a profit perspective. Uh, I agree with the initial 0.75 recommended tax increase from the administration. Uh, that was what we would have loved. If we had to do a tax increase, that would have been much better. I think once the water reserve or the water, the upfront lease payment from the water authority was on the table for dialogue and then subsequently was taken off of the table for a further investigation in the early of part of next year, one of the things that changed was I think that the percentage of our rate of return changed. Um, there are a few other nuances that happened between the first proposed budget to the where we are today. And I, I don't want that to be lost. I, I, I'm not gonna get into the minutia of it. Um, and to be perfectly honest, a lot of those comments are made if you want citizens can look at, um, you know, the YouTube page of the city, all those budget deliberations are all there. You can kind of travel with us through the process and the in the wording and the, and the system that we went through to get where we are today. It is not ideal uh, by any means, but it's one of those things I think uh, that's that's going to hurt now. But once we see the the spill out and the continual benefit in the future. I think we'll think that this was, the, was the right thing to do. I'm hoping that this effort, plus this council that I won't be a part of uh, as an elected anymore um, in 2020, will continue to look at the water, the upfront lease payment, because I think that that's still a viable asset and tool that we can use to help deal with the long-term debt issues that we have, the long-term uh, continual annual budget deficits we keep finding ourselves with. I think this tax increase, the potential of uh, what may happen next year with the upfront lease payment and a few other pieces um, are all parts. None of them are a panacea. If we would have taken the 90 million, we still gonna have a deficit in next year's budget. You know what I mean? There's some, still some nuance we gotta talk about uh, that doesn't always make you know some of the press and some of the, the hotspot conversations. So not ideal, but I think the, the pain of this, doing it now, uh, is going to give us uh, some some long-term benefit. And again, it wasn't just that we hiked it up twice as much as what the administration recommended initially. There were components that caused us to have to change the rate of the millage increase uh, in order to deal with, again, the pension issues that we were talking about, the rate of return on our um, pension funds coming in. All those moving parts were a part of this decision. And it wasn't made in a vacuum, and it wasn't made uh, haphazardly. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say, I, is it okay if I sure. like to say I agree with uh, Curtis Jones? Um, we are attacking that three-headed dragon analogy that the financial consultants mentioned. We are getting a grip on that with the um, special levy for pensions, but um, and. Kaz has talked a lot about changing the culture, and I saw one very vivid example of that last night when the finance director said he and uh, Teresa, who is the controller, have talked about um, changing up our monthly financial meetings so that we're meeting with um, department heads on a rotating basis, and we'll be hearing from them and pressing them and encouraging them to come to us with ideas to make government more efficient and to have innovative ideas. I, I know I get impatient because I want you know, change to come quickly. Um, 
it, but it's, it's getting there. So I'm more encouraged this year than I was last year. Last year, I was one of the no votes on the budget because I really thought that there should have been a, um, a pay freeze instituted for the uh, non-union people. We have one in uh, the coming budget. Um, the mayor and his staff have moved forward on looking at the HR operation. We're gonna be getting toward um, better training for employees. Uh, they're involving employees in figuring out how to um, get you know, evaluations done. Uh, I'm not privy to everything that's, that's going on, but between last year and this year, and even when I'm a critic, I see uh, the positive things that are happening. So I kind of thought that maybe people w would be berating us in person. We certainly have gotten some criticism on, in phone calls and in emails, but I've also heard from other people who said, um, it, not making a snap judgment on the water plan was also, uh, they approve of us for doing that, for doing our due diligence. So. And I wanted to say this, I was gonna wait until the end of the meeting, but uh, Barry Koppel's idea about um, a possible uh, you know, deferment or freeze on property taxes, <laughs> me and Google, I just Googled. I have no idea if this is permitted in the state of Pennsylvania, but the state of Minnesota does allow that. And it's called the deferral program for senior citizens who need help in paying their property taxes may qualify for the Senior Citizen Property Tax Deferral Program. Now this is means tested and there are a number of requirements about how long you've lived in your, in your house, but how refreshing it was to have a citizen come forward and say, here's an idea, that's what we need. And if we commit to getting those ideas generated, not just for the 2021 budget early in 2020, but going forward the next four or five years, imagine the successes we'll be able to talk about. Anyhow, I just was excited about that. And again, I don't know if, if that would be legal in Pennsylvania, but it's, it's not a, um, a far, far off idea. And Pennsylvania does have the property tax rebate if you qualify, you know, if you, if you have a financial means there. So maybe we need to also make sure that people are aware of that if they can, if, if they are income tested or, you know, meet the income requirements to be able to get that property tax rebate that's also available for renters. So it sounds to me like we have some education to do also. Thank you. Anyhow, but we are, I already voted yes, right, by my assent. That's twice now you voted <laughs> early and <laughs> often. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Allen, uh, you check Virginia too. They have a system where what, what happens to seniors is they freeze their property taxes. As long as no one in the house has income, they freeze it. Uh, the house still continues to be assessed, but it doesn't kick in until the new owners take, come in. But that's a, that's a way to help. But I think a lot of our problems, as you'll see with a couple of things I did tonight, are the problem of the Commonwealth. And we don't know, we're gonna keep Mr. Betts, I think, I hope busy in the next couple of years, find out what we can do in innovative ways. But I mean, I know this tax is gonna hurt a lot of people and it's gonna be painful. But until, and, and Liz brought it up and I wanna say it again, until we change the systemic problems that exist in this building, these one-time, and this is a one-time panacea. Yes, it has far-ranging effects for a period of time, but that's it, for 42 years, we have no income coming in. And we take that 90 million and we put it in and yes, it drops it down. But if we don't stop issuing meaning, uh, what I call non-necessary bond issues, we're gonna be right back in the same hole. And if history is any guide, that's what we do. We, we floated one time two bond issues to help the pension plan. And what did we do? We gave out more benefits and got back in the hole again. So I mean, we have to change the systemic problem. There's a solution right there. Here's one. This gentleman, Mr. Magui, has come here for, uh, I'm, I'm thinking 15, 20 years, and nobody has taken the task to find out if he's lying or telling the truth. And I think it's very simple. Let's find out if what he says is right. If it is, we have a whole slew of property that's being undervalued. It's what I brought up before about 
we, we don't we don't take out billing permits based on a proper valuation. We don't collect parking tickets right. We don't do anything. Until those things change, just throwing 90 million in a hole and taking down the debt for a little while, if we don't change the whole culture from this point going forward, it's no different than when we tore down the city back in the 60s and we were hoping for the new redevelopment, which never happened. This is a project going forward that's gonna be 20, 30 years in the future. We don't know what, it, right now we have a lot of nice things going on. We gotta see what happens in five or 10 years. The, the impetus has to keep. But we have, up here, we don't have the benefit of having a crystal ball. So systemically, we can do some things here, and I suggested them to the administration that we have to start implementing them. These are the things we can do without breaking the law, without breaking any labor contracts, and we have to start doing them. But if we don't, we're back in the same hole. I, I don't know how much more I can say about that, but things have to, things have to, and, and uh, today I was with a gentleman that actually agreed with our caution. He said, rather than throw it into debt reduction, have you thought about taking a portion of it and investing it in businesses a little bit more or forming some other issues? We, we didn't have time to consider none of that. It was an all or nothing, either put it on the debt or do this, and that came with, with no time for council to consider. And I think if we're gonna just 90 million, it could be good, but maybe it's not, maybe we don't put it all into bond reduction, debt reduction. Maybe we use a little bit for, uh, like this gentleman said, and he's a, he's a businessman. And one thing about business people, they all have different opinions. We all go to different colleges, we all have different ideas. And, and his, his, was, his has some merit, maybe we should invest it. Into, into some things around town here. But that's just something to consider. But in the meantime, I, I stick by my vote. And until things change around here, we can't keep kicking the can down the road. Thank you. Anyone else? City Council passed official file ordinance number 75 2019, finally by yeas four and yeas two. Council file number 16135, official ordinance number 76 2019, <clears throat> an ordinance of the City of Erie, County of Erie, and Commonwealth of Pennsylvania adopting the general fund and certain other budgets for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020, and ending December 31st, 2020. The following financial program is hereby adopted for the year 2020, and the appropriations are made in the general fund and other fund accounts that the sum of $95,120,127 is hereby appropriated to the general fund and the total budget. By Mr. Winarski, second by Mr. Witherspoon, the Council file Ordinance Bill number 16135, and now known as Official File Ordinance number 76, 2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Ms. Krutowski, Mrs. Shaw. No. Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Winarski. City Council passed official file ordinance number 76 2019, finally by yeas 5, nays 1. Council file 16 138, official ordinance number 77 2019. An ordinance of Erie Ca City Council of the City of Erie, Erie County, Pennsylvania, prohibiting the use of tobacco in recreational areas, parks, and playgrounds, and providing penalties for violations thereof. By Ms. Schaff, second by Ms. Allen, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16138, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 77 2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Krutowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Winarski. City Council passed official file ordinance number 77 2019, finally by yay six, nay zero. Council file number 16 139, official ordinance number 78 2019. 
amending the codified ordinance for the City of Erie, Part 1, Administrative Code, Title 7, Employment Provisions, Pension, Article 145, Officers and Employees Retirement System, Subsection 145.02c, Definitions, Actuarial, actuarial Equivalent, is changed in the following manner. That Part 1, Administrative Code, Title 7, Employment Provisions, Pension, Article 145, Officers and Employees, Employees Retirement si System, subsection 145.02c, definitions, actual aerial equivalent is changed in the following manner. Actual aerial benefit shall mean a benefit or amount of equivalent actual aerial value computed except as otherwise specified herein on the basis of the RP-2014 total data set mortality adjusted to 2006 for base rates and projected to the year of the calculation using the MP mortality improvement scale and interest at 6% per annum. By Mr. Potowski and second by Mr. Jones, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16139 and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 78 2019 be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mr. Schaff. Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. <coughs> City Council passed official file ordinance number 78 2019 finally by yay 6, nay 0. Council file number 16 140 official ordinance 79 29. 2019 an ordinance amending the codified ordinance for the city of Erie part one administrative code title seven employment provisions pension article 149 firefighters pension plan subsection 149.01 C definitions actuarial equivalent is changed as I read in uh, ordinance 78 2019 by Ms. Schaff second by Ms. Allen that council file ordinance bill number 16140 and now known as official file ordinance number 79 2019 be finally passed by the city council miss allen mr jones mr Potowski, mrs schaff mr witherspoon mr winarski city council passed official file ordinance number 79 2019 finally bay a six nay zero Council file number 16141, official ordinance number 80-2019, an ordinance amending the codified ordinance for the City of Erie Part 1, Administrative Code, Title 7 Employment Provisions, Pensions, Article 147, Police Relief and Pension, Pension Association, Subsection 14701C, Definitions, Actual Equivalent is changed as it is in Ordinance 78-2019. By Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Potowski, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16141, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 80 2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. <coughs> <coughs> City Council pass, pass Official File Ordinance Number 80 2019, finally by A6, A0. Council file number 16142, official ordinance number 81-2019, an ordinance amending the codified ordinance of the City of Erie Part 3 Business Regulation and Taxation Code Title 5 Act 511 Taxes, Article 371 Earned Income Tax, sub subsections 371.02a and d, effective January 1st, 2020, by fixing the earned income tax for general revenue purposes, Act 511, at 1%, and the Distressed Municipal Pension Recovery Tax Act 205 at 0.65% for total earned income tax rate of 1.65%. By Mr. Kwiatkowski, seconded by Mr. Jones, that Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16142, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 81-2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Winarski. 
City Council passed official final order of December 81, 2019, finally by a six, nay zero. Council file 16143, official ordinance number 82, 2019, an ordinance amending the codified ordinance for the city of Erie, part nine, streets, utilities, and public services code, title five, sewers and water, article 933, sewer rental, subsection 933.02a, by increasing the service charge fee per vehicle. By Ms. Schaaf, second by Ms. Allen, that council file ordinance bill number 16143, and now known as official file ordinance number 82, 2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Krakowski, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. City Council passed official file ordinance December 82, 2019, finally by a six, nay zero. <coughs> Council file 16144, official ordinance number 83, 2019 an ordinance amending the codified ordinance for the city of Erie Part 9 Street Utilities and Public Ser Services Code, Title 7, Other Public Services, Article 951, Residential Refuse, Subsection 951.09A, by increasing the collection fee per dwelling unit. By Mrs. Schaaf, second by Ms. Allen, the council file bill number 16144, now known as official file ordinance number 83-2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Krakowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. City Council passed official file ordinance number 83, 2019, finally by a six, nay zero. Mr. President, yes, sir. For the last time, I would like to yes move the balance of the agenda. And hey, Mr. President, yes. for the last time, I'd like to second it. <laughs> <laughs> Never say last. <laughs> yeah, touche. <laughs> I said that two years yeah. ago, right? <laughs> Do we have any separations this evening? I'd like to separate. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just like to separate number one, just to make it clear. Uh, <laughs> you know, say something about the sequel. So number one. I want to separate number three just for clarification. Which one, Cass? Uh, number three under new business. Okay. And I think Miss Allen wanted number one. Yeah, yeah I got to number one. Okay. All right, moving the balance of the agenda. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Ms. Krutowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. By Mrs. Schaff, second by Ms. Allen. Resolved by the Council of the City of Erie, we, the C Erie City Council members, are unified in joining Governor Tom Wolf, the Erie County Council, and Representative Ryan Bizarro in asking the Major League Baseball to save minor league teams like the Erie Seawolves. Whereas Major League Baseball is considering to end minor league baseball teams such as the Erie Seawolves, whereas baseball is a fun sport to watch at UPMC Park in downtown Erie, Pennsylvania, providing an inexpensive entertainment for people of all ages and socioeconomic status, whereas the Erie County Convention Center Authority has invested more than $15 million in UPMC Park this past year for better irrigation turf and drainage upgrades. They have installed a new video scoreboard enhancing the visual aspect of, of the following the game. They have spent this money also on new equipment, furniture, and fixtures. Whereas minor league baseball has contributed to the overall economic growth of Erie and surrounding communities in spring and summer, attracting citizens and tourists to dine and stay at nearby restaurants and hotels. Whereas the Erie County Convention Center Authority has provided steady employment to many employees and provided entertainment to a large fan base for many years to the Commonwealth, 
now therefore be resolved by the Erie City Council to persuade the Major League Baseball to rescind their idea of taking out minor league baseball teams such as the Erie Seawolves. Discussion? <coughs> oh, I just wanted to um, just single that out so that, and also thank the mayor for having written a letter of support for the Seawolves. I talked to Greg Coleman, president of the team today, and he said it really is critical that um, elected officials express their support. I do have um, a, a somewhat of a conflict of interest because I'm an usher at the Seawolves, but it's not my job that I'm thinking about. It's the full-time people who work there. Um, it's also the economic benefit that comes from having a um, professional baseball in downtown area. I was looking at <coughs> the uh, stories that the newspaper did in 1995 before the ballpark opened, and that really was part of the beginning of revitalizing downtown. So we can't let that momentum stop. So that's all I wanted to say. I, I'd like to support you, Liz, because for years the school district supported professional baseball. And I know it was it was great when they built a new stadium. And, and today it's kind of funny. It's not that our stadium's bad. It just doesn't meet the amenities. They keep raising the bar more and more that somebody told me like even in the majors now it's not about how nice and new the stadium is if it doesn't have all the frills and whistles it used to be minor league baseball was minor league baseball and when they when they talk about road trips my god michael and i were in the service we had we had long road trips i mean taking a bus ride from connecticut to erie shouldn't be a game breaker for you know and, and when we invest the kind of money we did in our ballpark and, and to learn that I think the Tigers even dumped on us a little bit, you know, makes me wonder if there's a plan somewhere that, you know, there's a lot of hardball being played, but I, I think in this case when, this, this will be probably the one time Congress is unified. <laughs> and, and I think you'll right see that. Right about that. But I think it's a good thing we should support them. When I was um, vacationing in Portland, Maine, two years ago, we stayed a block away from the stadium of the Portland Sea Dogs. And then later, I was on a train with a woman who had a small child, and she was the mother-in-law of a Portland Sea Dog, and they were mentioning how they were going to be coming to Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, later on in August to play and I mean who doesn't like baseball it's <laughs> it's a good fun entertainment and it doesn't cost a lot of money and I'm sure Liz you can attest that on um, dollar days Mondays how, what do they call it um, Buck night. Buck night. Thank you. <laughs> and it's it's packed. It's it's absolutely packed. So um, and the fireworks are totally awesome too. So you know it's a draw for the economy, but for the people coming in and staying and seeing what Erie has to offer outside of baseball as well. And I'm sorry, I don't want to belabor this, but Kathy reminded me, she's right, that this does bring people to town. I met the chief usher from the Vermont Lake Monsters, which is a single A team, which is also supposed to be eliminated under this plan. He loves baseball, and he came to Erie in April in his park to watch, watch a baseball game. I think he had also been at the Frozen Four in, in Buffalo. And I also met the head usher from the um, Reading Fight and Fill. So we ushers, we kind of like, we find each other, so. <laughs> Enough on that, from me at least. <coughs> All right, roll call. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winard. By Mr. Kotowski, second by Ms. Allen. Resolved by the Council of the City of Erie, a resolution to approve the financial statements and independent auditor's report of the Erie Erie Council of Governments for the calendar year ending December 31st, 2018. Whereas the city of Erie is a member of the Erie Area Council of Governments, and whereas the EA 
Renee Clogg has obtained the financial statements uh, and independent. Excuse account. me, Rose? Yes. I think you separated the wrong one. You said number three. Number three, that's number five you're on. So yeah, because we okayed number five, I think. All right. So which one do you want out of there? Uh, number three, the uh, Park and Review Board. Okay. Let's see if I can find out. I'm sorry. Was the numbering off or something? Or? Oh, I don't, they must have gotten mixed uh, up in the folder when I numbered. Okay. <coughs> by Mr. Kotowski, seconded by Mr. Jones. That Resolved by the Council of the City of Erie. The City Solicitor is respectfully requested to study and evaluate forming a parking review board by ordinance to review disputes over parking violations with the Erie Parking Authority and report his findings thereon back to City Council. Comment? Yeah, just real briefly, I, I separate that to explain what it, what it <laughs> does. We have a towing review board. We used to have a procedure in place for parking tickets, we had a traffic court. Uh, but the problem we have now is, uh, I know Mr. Witherspoon gets numerous complaints. We've all got numerous complaints. And they get sent to us because the parking authority says they don't understand the ordinances. That's what people tell me. Even though they should be, or they should be tagging. Uh, and then we get told uh, uh, when they come here to complain to city, they send it to council because we're the only one that can uh, abrogate the, the fines. So I'm thinking what we need is a council appointed committee. Uh, see if we can do this legally. Uh, the people have to pay up front. That's, I think that's the way it used to work in the old days. You paid up front. If you want to complain, you know, you, you have a forum just like the towing review board. And if they rule that there was justifiable cause, you would get your fine back. I think right now we have a system that's broke. You either have to call the parking authority, which may or may not help you. Then you call down here, which may or may not help you. And it's not, it's not fair that there are circumstances where I think compassion or something needs to be looked at, or if there's a problem where the signage is not proper, right now they have no form. They, they're up to the generosity of the one, the one person down here or the one, or the one person at the parking authority. So I hope this, uh, will go at least to help the citizens that way. All Thanks, right, Josh. roll call. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Ms. Krutowski, Ms. Schaff, <coughs> Mr. Witherspoon, <coughs> Mr. Wynarski. Uh, we have a couple of waived rules, Mr. President. Voting to waive the rules on resolution 29. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. By Mr. Kotowski, second by Mr. Witherspoon, <coughs> resolved by the Council of the City of Erie that the proper city officials are authorized and directed to designate Chestnut Street between West 16th and West 18th Street as Via Pat Cap Bianca in offer in honor of his many years of public service and dedication to the Erie community. Comment? Uh, yes, uh, I was approached by some members of the Italian American community about this and uh, Pat is still serving uh, both on the airport authority and uh, numerous other committees, the Ice House Gang, uh, different uh, avenues around town. His family's been very active. His brother was a state legislator, his father, was a conciliary, the representative of the Italian king in the old days. So if you had a problem, you had to go to Pat's father to get your passports or shipping any money out of the country. He was like uh, what we would call a, an ambassador today. Oh, that's what we call it today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think this is long overdue, and I, I'm glad uh, Mr. Witherspoon who worked with him uh, a lot longer than I did. Uh, you know, I think it's a long time coming. Uh, Mr. President, uh, as uh, Kaz stated uh, about his dad, I believe today we call him the governor. <laughs> <laughs> and we 
we go to him, let's see. <laughs> so don't you forget me, huh? Uh, <laughs> I just had a pain in my knee. I had to say something. <laughs> Boy, last means you're Europe. Right? Uh, anyway, uh, I've known Pat. I've sat on council with him a term, and I visit his classrooms when he's teaching. And it's a well-deserved honor, not only for Pat, for his entire family. Thank you for asking. Mr. President, I just want to echo the same thing, having the privilege of serving with Mr. Capabianca. Um, one of the funniest people I knew because he thought he knew everything and probably knew most of it. He was pretty right uh, in a lot of ways. Um, he definitely... Um, I think I grew on him in my time with him on council because I was like a young kid to him. One time he called me boy, and I had to like say, what do you mean by that? He's like, you're, you're like 29, you're 29 years old. And I was like, oh, okay, I thought we were talking about something else, brother. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, and I say that jokingly because we went from that point in my first budget session to him inviting me to his house and showing me his collection of, of videos and the, the original Batman series and all this crazy stuff. He's got like a museum in his house. Um, but beyond that, he and his family have been great uh, public servants uh, in a lot of different ways. And we, had, we didn't always agree, uh, but we always had the opportunity to share with each other. And I learned a lot from him uh, in my early days on council. And one of the things he would always say, be careful giving away your assets because you're not getting new ones. You know what I mean? And so that was a big mantra for him. And also council, you had two jobs, budget, and zoning, and he would just beat on those issues uh, very strongly, but I learned a lot from him uh, in, in as far as history and knowledge and wisdom, and uh, I think well-deserved uh, for him uh, to have this street named after him. It's good to be able to give people flowers while they can still smell them and drive on streets while they're still here. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, roll call. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Uh, waive rules for resolution number 30, voting to waive the rules. Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. By Mr. Kotowski, second by Mr. Jones, that resolved by the city, the council of the city of Erie, that the city solicitor is respectfully requested to study the legality and the implementation of a public safety or services fee to cover police, fire, and streets. Comment? Yes, uh, what I was thinking of here was we've been battling this question over and over. We've received letters, you know, tax the nonprofits. We can't. We can challenge them, but we can't tax them until state law changes. And the odds of that are slim and none, and slim left town a long time ago. It doesn't look like it's ever going to happen. So I think the only thing we can do, and I, I learned this lesson from uh, our solicitor and a few other <coughs> legal people around the, the Commonwealth and going to the League of Cities that fees can be charged but not taxes. So what I'm proposing is that, and I hope Mr. Betza finds, Attorney Betza finds that we can do this, and I hope that the new council uh, pursues this, because if it's done right, what we can do is we know what the police and fire, and if we can include public, you know, I mean, uh, public services like plowing, we know what those costs are. If we can segregate them into a number and push them into a, a, we don't have to maybe take it out of the general fund, but instead of just applying that to taxpayers, by being able to apply it to nonprofits and taxpayers, it should, in effect, lower the cost for, for every taxpayer because everybody will be paying their fair share. Assuming we don't, you know, raise, uh, we don't go nuts that we, you know, we keep our budgets in line. For instance, we know how much police and fire will cost this year. So take that fee, and rather than spread it just amongst the taxpayers that have to pay, now we're spreading it over a larger base. It should result in safety. That's what I call about systemic changes. We, we can't think in the old box no more. So I hope this works. If it's illegal, well, we tried. But, you know, for so long, we, we just never tried things. And I, I hope this works. Thank you. Mr. President, 
uh, question uh, we have with that if it's legal would that apply to those nonprofits that's participating in the pilot program that's a They'd good be question hit as well that's a to me that's a double hit <coughs> you know mr. Wisdom what I was thinking I thought the same question I was gonna ask attorney that's a it might force the issue of people actually coming to the table to make pilots, you know. And maybe we have to look at the legality of how we would treat that. That's why I'm saying it's only a study. And I, I don't, I, you know, I wouldn't, I didn't want to like, you know, we have to look at the pros and cons, and that's up to the new council. All right, roll call. Uh, Ms. Allen, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kotowski, Ms. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Winarski. Both of those waive rules pass 6 to 0. And that takes us to committee reports, Mr. President. Ms. Allen, I think we're going to let you go first and let our uh, ah, departures yeah. go. I, I think departures. that's a good idea. Okay, so I have, I, I think, three things on my list. I attended the Blighted Property Review com Committee meeting, and I was really excited to hear Kathy Rosdick, city planner, um, talk about how um, housing policy will come to be the focus of some of the work that the uh, neighborhood growth partnership is work will be working on in 2020 because I've asked a number of times about um, any momentum to create a housing court as recommended in uh, Erie refocus one of the things that happens is that sometimes um, when there are code violations property owners are treated differently depending on which district justice you go before or they have a payment plan and then the the payments are never completed so I also wanted to thank um, uh, PJ Manella for agreeing to be on the blighted property review committee he is um, with the Erie Realtors Association and I'm sure that the realtors were disappointed that we raised property taxes but I also know that from the moment I met uh, PJ when he moved to Erie from I, he's a native of Dubois I don't know where he moved to Erie from but he talked about living in the city and he also talked about um, the importance of addressing blight problems in terms of property values so I think he'll be able to lend his voice and his expertise to that uh, continuing on kind of the same theme I attended the land bank meeting on Monday and Chris Groner and some of the board members uh, Chris is a member of the board actually our economic development person for the city and some of the board members are asking very good questions about shaping policy on how uh, properties in the land bank are sold so I, I can see the land bank is starting to um, find its footing in in the role that the land bank can play in uh, helping to redevelop Erie I also attended the sewer authority meeting yesterday and that was not so much fun uh, because the solicitor for the sewer authority in open session mentioned that there's a right-of-way that has to be acquired I think it's for the capital project but I'm not sure that it's going to be possibly more expensive than originally forecast um, so he mentioned the name of this act this uh, right-of-way uh, concern in a public session then later the authority decided to go into executive session so I asked um, I consulted the uh, Sunshine Act in Pennsylvania which says that you have to be pretty specific about why you're going into executive session and uh, they ended up gaveling the meeting to be over with and the solicitor also said that I was out of order I had not scrolled down farther into the um, Sunshine Act uh, to get to the part which says that you can object somebody attending a meeting can object at any time to a decision to go into executive session so basically and we've talked I'm not a lawyer but I was right and they were wrong and I just did not like um, the way that that happened I said I was been, you know we've been very supportive of the sewer authority um, we back the bonds that are going into that capital improvement project I think there needs to be a really good relationship between the sewer authority and City Council uh, just tonight we approved forty eight thousand dollars in bills for the wastewater treatment plant I also had asked about um, what the status of Erie Coke was and I always get the standard line that the sewer authority is not an operating authority it's a financial vehicle yet the wastewater treatment um, the assistant bureau chief reports to the sewer authority about discharges and and what's happening there if 
The sewer authority has nothing to do with Erie Coke and with discharges. I think perhaps that the sewer uh, treatment plant um, bureau people should be coming to city council then rather than reporting to the sewer authority. I know we've gotten, um, we have started to look at the role of these um, of various authorities, including Erie Waterworks, and I think that uh, going forward, we kind of need to look at what, um, what's up with the sewer authority because we're the ones paying the bills and uh, if something's going to be overrun, we need to know about that. There's also been a problem with the freight elevator that's, uh, the new freight el elevator that's been installed there where apparently it's not quite meeting uh, the, the landing at various uh, floors and one of the sewer authority members questioned, isn't that a safety issue? And they said, well, usually people don't go on the freight elevator, but the sewer authority member said, yeah, but if it's, you know, is it high or is it low or what's happening with that? So that's my sewer authority report. Thank you. Oh, and I'm sorry, I did want to say, I know Kaz is going to have some words for me, but I wanted to thank both <laughs> Mr. Jones and Mr. Kwiatkowski. Um, for uh, being able to serve with them. I, I know Curtis and I, you know, sometimes we've, we've had different ideas, but especially, you know, we've had some really great conversations and moving forward and talking about being intentional in what we're doing to be inclusive in this community. And something weird has happened with me and Kaz. I've known him for years, knew him when he was on the school board. Um, we used to clash all the time, and I tease him about, Maybe he thinks it was too harsh about making sure we have gender inclusive language. But a lot of times we talk about sports and it, I kind of had an insight tonight. I thought when you find common ground that can bring people together. And yesterday we ended up talking about uh, uh, Ernie Harwell's uh, Ode to Baseball. So I looked it up and I forgot to print it out for you though, Kaz, but it is a, a beautiful heartbreak. tribute about why baseball is so American, so I will make sure I get that to you. So I guess that that was my little lesson and takeaway, is that you can find common ground in maybe the most unexpected places, so thank you. Very good, that's good. Ms. Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, first of all, um, attended the city planning meeting session yesterday and uh, I really love what our administration is doing in being uh, proactive with our neighborhoods and the uh, great things I think that uh, will come with this active transportation plan and the neighborhood uh, partnership center uh, had a meeting that I attended with Serve Erie and there's a lot of movement for volunteers helping each other in the neighborhoods and the neighborhood communities there's a lot of um, activity going on within neighborhoods to brighten up the neighborhood and uh, get rid of blight so um, kudos to our city planner and her team that she has I am still in the Thanksgiving mode and so <laughs> I thank God I don't know, should I say that? that Mel Witherspoon is back in good health with us and uh, even though I voted no on the property tax, I really love working with this council because like Jim, you mentioned, we can agree to disagree and still be an active body. <clears throat> and that's what it's all about, so I'm thankful to each and every single council person that uh, I work with. And I'm thankful to Teresa, and I'm thankful to Ed, and I'm thankful to Mayor Joe, and I'm thankful to Rose Boyer, and I'm thankful to the people out here who are listening 
and coming to the meetings and I'm thankful that we have a new council person ready to go on in January who is uh, actively engaged with us today. And I really believe that Erie is working better together, that things will um, come into fruition for the betterment of us all. And I'm thankful to the overflow shelter that is going on tonight at the Russian Orthodox uh, Center on the front of German Street that uh, has people uh, welcoming them at 7.30 in the evening till 10, and then they can stay there until um, seven o'clock in the morning because it's really cold out there tonight. And um, so we have so many volunteers because in order to run that program, people are giving up sleeping at night to make sure that everybody is safe there. So I'm just so thankful everybody um, <coughs> has You've been here a long time of service for the city of Erie. And so I'm thankful that you are going to be stepping across the way because you'll still be uh, sharing your wisdom with us. So um, thank you. And Curtis, um, I'm going to miss your uh, centering that you give us before our meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you for thanking everybody because you are genuine when you say it. I know that. I think that takes care of this side of the. Oh, Mr. Witherston, I didn't. <laughs> sitting at the back row there. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Jones, I been with you when you first ran and we met at JFK and there was a group that said no to you and I said yes to you and you made it and you've made a big difference not only here at council but in the city of Erie your prayers go a long way we're going to miss that but you're welcome to come to every council meeting and stand down there and open up with a prayer and uh, I'll, I'll give you that right to do that. But I appreciate everything you've done. You brought education to us. And when we get a little loud and rambunctious, uh, that tone of voice of yours uh, settles us down. And then we get back to business. I think that's the uh, minister in you. So I appreciate you. Uh, for all the years uh, just once when uh, you said something bad to me at the basketball court when you were a kid I never forget that that hurt it really hurt but I'll get over it uh, and uh, Kaz Kutowski <laughs> Lord have mercy Kaz I understand that Liz had a tape recorder in the caucus room and she calculated that 150 million times you said what they're doing in Allentown. <laughs> Only 150? That 150 million. Now, also you had 300,000 Bethlehem. Then you had some sprinkles all over. So if we can bring all those cities and what they're doing, that's positive. We're on the right track. Uh, you brought a lot of sanity in your own way to our council. Your experience in other places makes us think. Can we do it? Should we do it? The places you've been, I haven't been. But I do listen to you and I do joke around. That's just my MO. 
but I take it very serious. It's been a pleasure serving with you, especially when you get angry. I get angry, I don't turn red. <laughs> you get angry, you turn red, so you don't know when I'm mad. <laughs> I smile when I'm mad, then I kill you. But uh, you, you know, you and Curtis bring and has brought so much. And what I do know that the things that you have brought to the table that are incomplete only because of timing, that you a phone call away. I'm going to ask you, what did you mean? Did you mean this? Did you mean that? It could be a year from now. So you never get away from being a good councilman. Thank you very, very much for your services. Uh, I want to thank uh, the gentleman at SCI Albion who sent many, many get wells to me. And one in particular, not going to mention his name, but he said if he wished he had listened to me, he wouldn't be where he's at today. And my response to him was simple. Follow all the rules in the house that you live in now, and you'll be out here, and we'll be here to help you. There's a lot of programs. Mr. President, to you, that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President, for the last time. Uh, my official duties are kind of ended. I attended the Airport Authority and the O&E Pension Board. Nothing really big to report there. I want to thank uh, my council members. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I've served on many school boards and have been with a couple councils now, and I I'm really proud of this one. Uh, starting on my right, Curtis, he's always been kind of like a voice of reason, like Mel said. You know, in the midst of all the turmoil and the yelling, there was like a calm there. He was cautious, but his experience he brought to the table was valuable. He was always someone you could talk to. We're going to miss his, like Mel said, we're going to miss his, uh, we're going to have to get a new uh, religious leader here to read the prayers unless he comes back. Every uh, meeting. I think his only disappointment time. is he, he still has in his mind, he doesn't know whether he could have beat me when I was 18. I, I, think, I still think I was faster than him, but that, that's in legend right now. Uh, to, my, to my left, uh, Miss Arrington, she, uh, I want to applaud her for, with all the distractions she had in her life. Uh, she never let it get in the way of her council duties. It was a pleasure working with her, uh, and I wish her the best of luck. And she always did her job, and I found you could always talk to her. And it, you know, having her beside here was was a real pleasure. To Jimmy, uh, Jimmy was somebody I could always go to and sound out a little bit. We would run into each other around town a little bit, once in a while. And even though he's a Pittsburgh fan, I forgive him, but uh, he's a good guy, and uh, I think. He brings a lot to council, his experience, uh, his reasonableness, uh, and you know he's done a great job as president. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, to Kathy, Kathy, uh, I, I like your vibrant, you, you know, you're very young and you're learning on council. You're eager and you bring a different perspective, which makes this council great, which is the fact that everybody brings a little bit. It's like, a, you know, it's, it's like going to a party and everybody brings something and, and you got a different perspective on things that a lot of us don't think about. Like you said, we don't always agree, but you know, it's great and I think you're gonna be a good council person. To Mel, uh, you know, how do you take away the years of service he's had? Uh, many tours on council and I think that's important. I, if there was one reason to never have term limits for council people, that Mel would be uh, one of the reasons. Uh, you know, with Mel, you could always talk to him, and he was always easily approachable. And Mel, I apologize if that block shot did anything to harm me in later life, but... <laughs> and, 
You know, there's a rumor that you and Jimmy are, I think, you know, I, I still think you guys are brothers. You know, but uh, I'm going to miss you, Mel. It's been, it's, it, it's been a pleasure working with you, and especially on the finance committees. The work you did on the water reserve was very important, and always found that your your input on that was valuable. And to Miss Ellen, uh, yes, we did get off to a rough start, and uh, but I think you know there's always common ground in in politics, and I learned that when I was young, and just coming up that. Too bad Congress can't learn from what we do. That, you know, it's okay to disagree. And, and we had our little quarrels, but at the end of the day, there's always a common bond. bond. And sports, maybe that was it with us. But, you know, once you, get to, once you get to talk to each other, you find out there's a lot you have in common. And, you know, I'm 70 years old, and I'm not going to change my ways too much. And Liz will still be yelling at me, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But Liz, I think, that, you know, I'm going to pay you a compliment. Now, you may not think it is. <laughs> but to be, to be gender uh, correct, you know, you're very thorough and you're very tough. And I like that. Uh, you know, you do your homework well. I don't think anybody can dispute that. And I think it's your years of experience at the newspaper. So I like to think you're the female version of me. Hey, oh. <laughs> you're like the, you're like the, the sledgehammer. And, and I like that. And... I feel, you know, because of that, I feel good leaving because I think when I leave now, I, I look at this council and I said, and I feel like, you know, they, they got a lot, of, a lot of good things are happening. I look at what we did here. Over the years we did, Curtis and I, we, we got involved with the land bank way back in Lancaster. We pushed it a little bit. And, and I'm going to say that the administration has followed through on a lot of our, our things we desired. The parking tickets and the re the reimbursement issue, you know, council took a stand on that. The garbage fees, you know, for years we did nothing. It was a status quo around here. Lerda, that was a big step. We all, we all paid a little bit politically for it, but it's the right thing to do. It really was, and I think history will prove that. And the pension issue, for years we've you've argued about the pensions, about changing the assumptions, <coughs> and the board was for it, but. Many councils weren't, many administrations weren't. We finally got a consensus. It's gonna be painful, but in the long run, when we look back 10 or 15 years from now, it was the right thing to do, and we'll pay the benefits of that. I'd like to thank the uh, controller. Uh, I feel very proud that she took over my job, and she's done a great job, and uh, she's, doing a, she's doing a great job on all the pension boards, I've served with, and she works well with Mr. Lichtenwalter. I also want to say it's been a pleasure working with him. Uh, no finance person here at City Council, the, being on the finance committees, I found him very approachable, and Paul and I get along a lot better than a lot of people think we do. To Mr. Betza, I apologize. I, I once thought it was a bad mistake hiring you like we did, and I've learned that, you know, it did work out well. I have to admit it. I was a little skeptical. I was one of the skeptics, but uh, you know, I've, you've never, you've never once uh, not got back to me when I asked you to, and I appreciated all your fine work. Uh, to the office staff, to Rose and all the ladies there, uh, we we can't really function up here without them. To the people of Erie, I thank them for their confidence in me. Uh, to Michael, welcome aboard, and it's going to be good to have a second veteran on uh, elected officials, it's been a long time. And to the mayor, I wanna thank he and the staff. I know we disagree and we argue, but that's okay. Out of that debate will come positive things. Uh, I remember what uh, my teacher, Patsy Friedel, taught me once when I first entered politics. And I'll end on this statement. Where reasonable people meet, reasonable things will happen. And he was. He used to talk about Pan Moon John, and now they couldn't even agree where to sit on the table. So I think, you know, we may argue, but I think at the end of the day, we get things done. So Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy Kwanzaa, and holidays, whatever, to the people of Erie. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I guess the five-minute five clock is not working today, right? <laughs> <laughs>
No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, right? Um, this is funny. It's almost like uh, the end of a sitcom. You know, it's all these stories that we're kind of wrapping through. Uh, it's been truly a pleasure for uh, me to serve uh, as an council member, uh, absolutely as an elected official, but hopefully more so as a, as a community and a public servant over the last several years. Um, and as I mentioned before, it was an honor and I was greatly appreciative of this council uh, to allow me to come back and serve for another year uh, to fill former Councilman Mursky's uh, end of his term. Uh, I want to, again, all the thanks have been given, you know, but I, I do want to take a moment and thank the administration and, uh, and the mayor specifically and administration in general for um, all the efforts that you're making to make Erie a better place and being intentional about a lot of things, even as mentioned, sometimes we don't always agree on approach, but I think we agree on end result. And, and that's what's uh, important. You know, unity and uniformity are two different things. And so I think we have a good spirit of unity, even though we're not always in lockstep uniformity on how to get there. So I honor that and appreciate it. Um, Ed, uh, Mr. Betza, just the cool dude uh, in general, and as part of the Beard Gang, as well as the mayor. So we're, 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 it's been a pleasure to work with you this year. Uh, in all seriousness, very sharp, um, and you, you really have a, a gift of almost being, no disrespect, because I appreciate attorneys, but you weren't very typical, uh, to be honest, and I think that was refreshing for me and for refreshing for this body, to, for you to be as, as approachable as you have been. Uh, Teresa, our controller, uh, you've kind of hung out for a few years now, and it's been a pleasure working with you and your, your honesty and your just, just being you and being sincere and being authentic, and I, and I honor and appreciate that tremendously. Uh, Rose, uh, <clears throat> just a blessing, really. Uh, just a, Some people are sweet, um, but some people are artificial sweeteners. She's the real deal kind of sweet, and, and I appreciate that. And, and Marilyn and, um, and Lori, they whip me into shape when I need, where you been? Where you, been? you know, they're on me. Get to your mailbox, all this stuff. Um, but they've been assets and I couldn't have done anything, uh, the logistics of things uh, that need to get done. They really are that, that brain center and, and even backbone. So I appreciate all you've done. Uh, Liz, you know, I was going to crack a joke about Kaz. I'll save it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tremendously and without a doubt appreciate you and your passion. I'm a passionate person. Uh, but I had to dial my passion back because you and I, at the height of our passion, we, it would it have been overload. Uh, but I, I sincerely appreciate um, the way that you research things and the way that you go and get it. And you bring things to us to consider. Some work, some don't. Some we agree, some we don't. But man, it has never been a hard feeling uh, because I know your heart was pure in what you're trying to do. So I honor that. You've made me think about things differently as well. Mr. Witherspoon, we go way back. We, we know I gave you a whole lot of tribute like two weeks ago, man. You ain't getting all this again <laughs> today. But you've been a mentor to me, and I'm sure you will continue to be a mentor to me uh, on council, but just in life and in community. And I thank you for all you've done, do, and will continue to do uh, for me and my family in this community. Kathy, I don't know another person who's more sincere and authentic about your passion for people. And I'm a pretty big people person, uh, but you, you do things, and your heart is so... Uh, I almost say on your sleeve, but I mean it in a good way. Like you're just open to people and where they are from the highest to the lowest to everything in between. And, and that's priceless. We need more of that in public service and just in the world. Um, Mr. President, boy, not only do you know how to fix cars, uh, but you've worked well to fix this body of elected officials to get us moving sometimes and to get us sometimes off of a point we kind of get stuck on. You know, this, it's like herding cats. You know, it really is being council president sometimes, but you've it, done it in your own way and you've done it well. You know, kind of uh, just a real person. You know, that's what, like this body is just a bunch of real people, and I, and I think that's really, really valuable. No pretension about you, and uh, I appreciate that. And it's been a pleasure serving with you uh, and having a professional, but also uh, a, a personal friendship. Uh, Mrs. Arrington, in her absence, uh, just, you know, again, a heart to do what was right and with the consciousness that she had about what was right. And I think all of us do that. Um, 
going through, we all have life experiences. I've had mine, and some of those things play out publicly. But guess what? When you have a heart to serve, you just keep pushing, keep doing. And, um, and all things do work together for good. And so we just respect her for her work and her service uh, over the last four years uh, as well. Because we have to remember, she initiated her service through a lot of pain that many of us will never know what it feels like. And thank God we'll never know what it feels like uh, to deal with as a mother who lost a child in that way. Um, Lord, I'll, I'll quote Mr. Witherspoon, Lord have mercy. Yes. Mr. Kwiatkowski, Cass, seriously, you have, you have, you're probably the most elected person in Erie history, <laughs> from school boards to controller to the city council to treasurer. Um, every, you know, and that speaks to your ability to, to, to put yourself in a position to serve, but also make people believe in what you're saying and give you the chance to serve. Everyone can't cross like that. And so I appreciate you. We go back to um, for my first time. One of the things that I remember most about Kaz, we started this game about 14 years ago. Uh, we were sitting and we were all getting sworn in and his mother was here and I was, you know, I was a pretty good football player in high school and college and all those things. And he's been threatening me for about 14 years that he could whoop me in every sport. Um, and he, he was faster than me in track and he could, you know, hit me harder than I could run through him in football. And he always would threaten me and he would do this. Now back when I, you know, before I was playing, when he was playing in leather helmets, uh, you know, leather hats, they were playing football. It was legal. <laughs> It was legal to clothesline people, and he was always threatening me. This was a sign that he would clothesline me if he ever got me on the field. Um, but we've done personal jokes and family connection. Went to school with your daughter, one of your daughters, you know, in middle school. Um, but it's been an honor to serve with you on this council and with you as well as controller. One of the things about you is that if people will listen to you, you know what the heck you're talking about. And, um, and I appreciate that tremendously. Um, to all the citizens who elected me previously to three consecutive terms, um, two, two times to the uh, Democratic National Convention as a delegate, uh, and, and, the, and we're, weren't too crazy and, and upset about me uh, taking this one year of an appointment. I appreciate the citizenry and all the folks that help me to do what I do as a part of this council. I know I'm probably missing someone and some people uh, but I want to end with a story, if I could, very quickly, um, or a scenario. Uh, and I'll use the city of Erie because we are—we have made some hard choices. We've had some hard situations to deal with. And I'll use the city of Erie as uh, we're, we're closer to shore, but we're still in a deep water on what we need to do to get ourselves to full solvency and and be able to be the great city and manifest the greatness that this city really is. And so I, I'll use the city as still being in the water, looking for a way to get to shore. And we're just kind of in this doggy paddle situation. And you've got the administration who's got a rope, council's got a rope, and the citizens themselves have a rope in trying to save the city and bring the city back to where we need to be and the administration throws your rope out, Mayor, and it's too short, not enough. Council, we throw our rope out, too short, not enough. Citizens got ideas all over the place, just throw their rope out, too short, not enough. And we can sit here on that shore and say, well, you know what, our rope is better than yours, or, or why didn't you think that, and why didn't you work? Or we could say, you know what, let's tie our rope to your rope and then we'll tie those two ropes to the citizenry and throw this longer, more unified safety valve or safety opportunity uh, to the city of Erie. This is my city. This is where I grew up. This is where I've got 13 siblings. My parents, 40 plus nieces and nephews are Erie residents. And we have to save this great gym, this great place that many people from outside of here see as valuable sometimes more valuable than we who still live here. So I'll end with that and to say, let's take all of our ropes, all of our ideas, all of our approaches, tie them together, and let's reach to where the problem really is and pull our city up to the greatness level uh, that I know we can be. Again, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure. I, I absolutely love 
all of you in, in very unique ways. And it's been a pleasure to serve. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you, if you don't celebrate anything, just be happy. Bobby McFerrin said it back in the 80s, I think, don't worry, be happy. And it's been my pleasure to serve. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, I just want to thank the council here, as since we're in the thanking mode, but really for the due diligence we did with this budget. Uh, we had a meet, if not eight to 10 different times, although uh, maybe we didn't get some cuts we thought might have been beneficial, or maybe we didn't get some increases, or maybe we just didn't get everything that would have made everybody happy and all the citizens happy and the administration happy. We did get ideas on what we need to do to bring in new revenues, but or different revenues, but the biggest thing we got to go for from here is how we implement them so it will help us in 2020 and 2021. And I don't think anybody's idea that they threw out there during our budget process was a bad idea. I mean, whether it would mean a $10,000 addition in revenues or 10,000 or 100,000. It, it's something that 2020, we really gotta go above and beyond what we did in 19. I mean, we, we moved a little bit in 19, but I think we need to do bigger and better. Um, we are gonna do our due diligence and honestly look into this water lease deal to see if that's the best thing for this city, for the people of this city, not just in 2020 or 2021, and but for years down the road. And uh, I know the administration is committed. I know this council is committed. I ask the residents be patient with us. These are not easy decisions we're trying to make up here. And <laughs> although we may joke around sometimes, I'm not losing my hair from joking around, but uh, <laughs> uh, please, uh, I believe we honestly have a good core group that we're, we have coming back that really have the best interests of this town. And uh, although uh, we came up with a tax increase and uh, a few fee increases, we did learn a lot and people got to realize between the assumptions and our pensions and even the special levy taxes. I don't know if everybody realizes the special levy taxes that are put on the citizens that work and live in the city have now been implemented or are going to be implemented in 2020 for the people that work in the city and live outside the city. So that is, that's big. Um, so, Although there's a tax increase, there is good things that came out of the budget. But uh, I did uh, tell one citizen to be heard that we normally respond during our committee reports. He was talking about $10 million in the water deal and all that. I just want to respond to say it was a $90 million deal we're dealing with come the first of the year or the first quarter of the year and that, uh, you know, any questions you may have, we're, we're here to listen, but you get into dialogue and conversation in all actuality, your five minutes will be up a lot quicker and uh, you may not still get the answers you're looking for. Um, there was one other thing. Did we officially get the $400,000 from the parking authority? That's good news. We did, and I appreciate the administration, and I know we were vigilant as council that we needed to come up with a better deal with the parking authority, uh, whether it's a municipal agreement or a one-year agreement. We had to start somewhere, get the uh, conversation lines open again on where we were at moving forward. So I appreciate them holding up their end of the deal and uh, helping us with our 2020 budget. Uh, I want to thank you, Council 
members and citizens as me being your president of council. Uh, it's been an interesting year to say the least, uh, but uh, wouldn't trade it for nothing. I still would rather a little better budget, but we'll go from there. But I do want to let everybody know I am going to apply to stay on as council in 2020. Still feel there's a lot can be done, needs to be done, feel like I can uh, hold the reins and uh, help implement some of the things we talked about. Um, but with that being said, I also want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, prosperous New Year for everyone, including the citizens and the city of Erie itself. Thank you. So take us to our Miss Controller, Ms. Stankler. I don't have a report other than happy holidays to everyone and turn the heat on. We're saving money. <laughs> Mayor Schember. Thank you, and I'll, I'll be quick also. The, the parking authority is committed to giving us 400000 next year. Also, they are not going to require our 100000 so that's the net of a, it's a positive 500000 in the 2020 budget. But we are going to try to negotiate with them because that whole deal is, it's a mess. Give and take and back we, and yes. forth. And, and we want to come up with something simpler that works for both sides. Hopefully we'll do that in 2020. Obviously, you guys will be involved in that as well. Uh, I want to thank you for changing the, the pension assumptions. That's one of, the, one of the three major issues in the city's budget. Uh, and that change alone is going to make a huge difference going forward. Uh, with that change, according to estimates that we've received, we're going to save $67 million over the next 20 years. That's a little more than $3 million a year in savings. I, I really thank you for doing that. That's a huge step. I also look forward to continuing to work with you on the Water Authority uh, prepayment of their lease. Uh, we have uh, ordered the appraisal. Because my understanding is that you don't want to move until you see you know, what it's worth. Uh, so that's in process. Hope to have that as soon as possible. It'll be a full-blown appraisal, not the $10,000, but the one that's probably going to cost forty to 50000 I think that's well worth the effort uh, or the expense to, to do that uh, so that you know, we can move forward with those uh, conversations. That one will also make a huge difference. It's, uh, it, it would save about $90 million over the next 30 years. So that's, again, that's an additional $3 million. Lastly, I just want to share with you the uh, topics for tomorrow's press conference. Uh, obviously, you're all welcome always to attend. But we're going to give a brief recap on the Zebo delegation meeting. Uh, we're going to highlight the LGBTQ plus municipal quality index, which just came out recently and is up significantly from a year ago. Uh, we're going to announce the opening of the, the flagship fund grants to uh, local businesses. And we're going to present uh, a, a new Lilly Broadcasting program that's going to help Erie's <coughs> most needy. Uh, we're going to showcase some of the events going on this weekend in downtown Erie. And uh, there will be an update on Alerta. We've had another significant increase in Alerta filing. Uh, so again, thanks, uh, thanks for you know, clearly pleasing your service. And uh, I look forward to working with the four of you, <coughs> Michael as well, uh, in the year ahead. Thanks very much. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I don't think I thanked you guys. <laughs> not a second time or not a tenth time. But, uh, doesn't matter. Thank you. Really good man. Appreciate the effort. Uh, that's it. Enough said. Good luck in the event. Gaz, I'm sure we'll be seeing you. <laughs> Rose, I think we're done unless you have a comment. Merry Christmas. Oh, Mr. Betts, uh, he's talking. <laughs> Thank you. Rose? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. City Council adjourns at 9.29 p.m. Mr. Yeah. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mr. Yeah, Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mr. Shaw, Mr. Winarski.